Amen. Thank you, Iken. My name is Joel, and today I have a shorter message for you because we got some kids in the house. Can I hear the kids scream? If you're a kid, tell me that you're here. Scream really loud. Yes. Moms and dads, I am going to, uh, to make this fairly brief, but also I hope, that, uh, I hope that you'll hear me out just for a few minutes because the beauty of the gospel, the good news of Jesus, is that in some ways it is a kiddie pool that a kid can wade into and understand. Even a three or four or five or six-year-old can understand the good news of Jesus. And yet at the same time, it's like Lake Tahoe, Jeff, am I right? It's like the deepest lake in the world and a theologian can drown in it. So for 10 minutes, I just want to tell you about this good news of Jesus. And I hope that wherever you're at on your spiritual journey, that you'll, you'll hear me out and you'll, you'll ask, ask the Lord a couple questions even as we close today, as I give you some space to do that. So we're in this series uh, in Moses and we're going through, we're in week four of six, so we've got two more weeks to go. And I got really excited this week because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's Church of the Creek, so we usually don't, we usually kind of have this as a service that's separate, that's outside of a series, but today we thought, man, let's just, let's just make it a part of the series. When Moses, one of the, one of the most uh, impactful things that Moses did was in Exodus chapter 19, and even if you haven't been in church or been around church very much, you've probably heard of something called the Ten Commandments, right? Do not kill, do not lie, do not steal, my favorite obey your parents. And Moses comes down from Mount Sinai with the 10 commandments, did you, but did you know that those weren't the only 10? There were actually 613 different commandments that Moses came down and gave to the people of Israel. Moses goes up on Mount Sinai. He is the, uh, the mediator between God and his people at this time. And Moses goes up and down and up and down and up and down this mountain, speaking for God to the people and then for the people to God. The people, everybody else is not even allowed to step foot on the side of the mountain because God is too holy and he is on top. And there's this cloud that engulfs the top of the mountain. But Moses, for some reason, God chooses Moses to be this person that can go up and down and up and down. And he comes down and he gives people the law. And in, in starting in Exodus chapter 19 and, and all the way through the book of Leviticus, this is the law that Moses gives to the people. And if you've ever tried to read the Bible in a year, you get to the end of January. You know, you started on January 1st. In Exodus chapter 19 through Leviticus is probably where you stopped because it gets pretty wild. And it's like, man, there's a lot of talk about the tassels on my robe and the pigeons I'm supposed to kill. And it is, it is elaborate and detailed and, and certainly unique. And if I read that, I think, man, why did, why did he even give them the law? Why, why were there so many rules? And here's why. This is why Moses gave the law. He gave the law to show these people the gap between where they were and the holiness of God. That's why he gave it. He gave it to expose them. And for 1,200 years, after Moses gave them 613 laws, for 1,200 years, they break the law over and over and over, and they're exposed. They're exposed as lawbreakers over and over and over. And so then Jesus comes on the scene, and if you know anything about you know, church or me, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty pro-Jesus guy. And you think, man, Jesus is going to come make this better and easier. And Jesus is going to save the day. And Jesus, in a shocking twist of events, makes it harder. He gives a message just like this in a creek, at a park, just like this. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. It's the most famous sermon ever. And he says, you've heard, the law says, don't kill anybody. But I say, you're not even allowed to get mad at anybody. Do not get angry at a brother or sister. And so people going, well, wait a minute. It feels like Jesus just made it more challenging because I hadn't killed anybody, but I have been mad. And Jesus says, love your, you said the law says, love your neighbor. But Jesus says, I say, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. And so once again, Jesus raises the bar and Jesus says, the law says an eye for an eye. Things need to be fair. And Jesus comes and says, if anybody slaps you on the cheek, turn the other one. If anybody asks for your shirt, give him your coat. And if you don't live this way generously, you've broken the law. 
And the people are going, well, wait a minute. We haven't been able to keep the law as it was. How are we going to keep the law now? You've made it even more challenging. You've raised the bar. And then Jesus kind of sums up his whole, this part of the message. And he goes, be perfect, just like your heavenly father is perfect. That's what it says. Jesus tells the people, be perfect. And it's almost like he was messing with them. He was essentially saying, if you want to be saved by obeying the law and obeying the rules and doing all of the Christian things, if that's how you want this to, to work, then you have to be perfect in order to be with God. And the people are going, this is impossible. You guys see the law was given and then Jesus raised the bar. And here's why he wanted to show you the gap between us and holiness. There's a, there's a verse in Romans chapter three that I want to read you. Paul wrote this about the law and about us. Romans three says this, for no one, no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. Nobody can do it. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. So Paul, 1,300 years later, says what Moses was doing. He, what God was doing when he gave Moses the law. He, he says, the law simply shows us how sinful we are. The law was given to show me and to show you and you and you. The law was given to show us that we need a savior. A good friend put it this way as I was talking to him this week. He says, the law was given to break you to allow Jesus to make you. The law proves that we need someone to help us. So uh, we've got somebody who's gonna get baptized today and her name is Campbell Payton. Campbell, would you come up here real quick? Where's she at? She's right here. Now here's the thing about Campbell. Campbell is an incredible CrossFit athlete. All right, and so uh, to, I, I was thinking about this this week, Campbell, and I thought there's no way I can get out of this without giving a CrossFit illustration in your honor. So here's what we need. Kelsey and uh, Annie, will you guys grab one of those boxes and bring it out here real quick? Just one of them. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Come on down here. So uh, Campbell, you ever done a box jump? Yeah, she's done a box jump, probably like a million of them. And uh, so this is, uh, let's turn it over on its side. How many inches high is that one? I think it's maybe 24. We need to get a nice base, Annie. There we go. Perfect. Oh, yeah. All right, Campbell, here's what we need to do. I need you to demonstrate for all these people how to do a box jump. You're not warmed up. Don't pull anything. You're young. You'll be fine. All right. So you're going to use your arms? Yeah, all the way on top and make sure your, your feet go right there in the middle. I don't want you to fall and that would be embarrassing for everybody, especially you. All right. Boom. Give it up for Campbell. Peyton, are you kidding me? Campbell, this, while you might think it is a rogue box, for the point of this illustration, this is the law. And on top of it is holiness and the ability to be in the presence of God. It's a relationship with God. But the way this works is that, you know, when you jumped up there and everybody clapped, that probably made you feel good because you did it. You earned it. You got on top of it. But the problem with this way of thinking is if you look at the law in the Old Testament and then what Jesus kind of added to it, and you look at the Bible as a whole, it's like, it's not just one box. It's, it's 613. Just, so just for the sake of the illustration, Jared and Kelsey and Carly and Annie. Will you guys bring up those other two for me real quick? We're going to see what Campbell's got. You guys think she can do it? Yeah. Let's stack them on top of each other and see, see how high you can jump. This is going to be awesome. Come on down. Yeah, just, yeah, we'll just put it right on top. Campbell, she's pretty incredible, so we should be fine. Yeah, let's just, you know what? Yeah, you're, yeah, just do it like that. That'd be good. Now throw that one on top of here. Yeah. All right, Campbell, you step up right here so everybody can see you real good. All right. So you're going to want to use your arms. Okay? And just kind of explode. Yeah, she's not going to try. Come on. <laughs> come over here so people can see you. Campbell, this is, uh, 
I want everybody to see this, and, and you especially, that this is what the law looks like, but add 610 more boxes. If we're going to try to reason with God and say, we're good enough, we have what it takes, we just never do. We don't have what it takes. The law was given to expose the gap between where we are and holiness and God. And the beauty of the whole of scripture and the Bible and the story of Jesus is that Jesus doesn't leave us on the ground trying to jump our way up to him for the rest of eternity. Jesus, God says, you know what? They're not going to be able to do this on their own. And so I'm going to make a way for them to be able to do this without even the ability to jump. So Campbell, hold on to this. So what Jesus did was he, he came onto the scene and he essentially said, nobody, nobody is going to have the ability to get with God on their own strength, on their own merit, on their own church attendance, on their own community group, on their own volunteer hours, on their own efforts. Nobody's going to be able to jump that high, but I'm going to make a way for them. And so Jesus Christ came, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, rose again, and essentially said, whoever believes in me, can be back with God forever. And so rather than trusting in Campbell's jumping ability, Campbell Payton has chosen to trust in Christ instead. I mean, everybody knows, Campbell, your friends are right here, right? This is the whole, the, the Young Life crew up here, over here. You guys know, has Campbell kept all of the law? Has she ever made a mistake? Yeah, and she will. And you, can t you will for the rest of your life. Campbell is not trusting in her jumping ability, her ability to do the right thing all the time. Campbell is trusting that Christ did the right thing for her. So Campbell's not getting baptized because she's sinless or even that she sins less. She's getting baptized because Jesus paid it all. And, he, and here's what I'll say to everybody else. If, you're, uh, if you'll give me like 45 more seconds. If I were to ask you, how is your relationship with God going? And if you would say something other than really, really good, if your answer, if you were honest, was like, not so good. I want it to be good. Not great right now. I would propose, just try this on for size, that you think, at least in the moment, that your relationship with God is really hinging on how good you're doing for him. And, and maybe if I say, how's your relationship with God? And you go, not so good. You immediately start thinking about the things that you wish you were doing better. That's not the gospel. The gospel is that when I say, how's your relationship with God? The first thing you think of is the person and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and what he did for you. So maybe the best way to ask it is recently, have you been thinking more about what you're doing for God or what God did for you? Are you thinking more about what you're doing for Jesus or what Jesus did for you? A mark of spiritual and Christian maturity is that you begin to think less and less about what you're doing for God, and you think more and more about what God did for you. And so when someone asks you, how are you doing? How's your relationship with God? You're able to say something along the lines of, I just can't believe he did that for me. The only way to this perfect relationship with God is through Jesus. And so I'm just swimming in the grace and enjoying every day and trying to follow him as best as I can. But at the end of the day, I'm good, not because of me, but because of him. And, and, and one last thing, what's so cool about this, even if this thing was 603 box or 613 boxes high, what's so cool about this is that God never lowered the standard he remains holy, always has been, always will be. He, he always, he never lowered the standard. He never said, well, fine, since they can't pull that off, I guess I'll just let them be with me even though they're not forgiven for their sins. He said, no, I'm gonna keep the standard. But it, so it shows us how holy he is, but it also shows us how good he is that despite the fact that this thing is unattainable in our own strength, perfection is not possible in the human life. 
it also shows us how good he is by making a way back. Amen? That is the gospel. It is not what we do for him, but he, what he did for us. So Campbell, you can come all the way out here in front of your boxes now. Guys, Campbell uh, is just briefly, I got to hear this story on Wednesday, and I thought, there's no way that I can rob our church of getting to hear this part of the story. So Campbell's going to share uh, what, just a few things that have led her to want to be baptized today and, and tell you all that she trusts in Jesus and not her ability to follow the Ten Commandments. So Campbell, take us away. Hi, I'm Campbell. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about my story. I... I'm here today to renew my relationship with the Lord, and a lot of people, when they're getting baptized, I've heard them say, I'm here to give my life to the Lord, and you're probably wondering why I'm not saying that, and the reason that I'm not saying that is because I've actually been baptized twice in my life, and yes, I am very young, but I was once baptized when I was a baby, and then I got baptized again when I was in fourth grade. And it was after I had gotten back that summer from church camp. And the reason that I got baptized when I was able to understand who the Lord was and that he was going to work in my life, I wanted to make the commitment that he was going to stay in my life. And the Lord has been continuously working in my life. I just don't believe that I was able to see it until a few months ago, honestly. I have been a believer in the Lord since I was a kid, and um, I do continue to believe that He is my Lord and my Savior, and I, I'm, I'm just overjoyed with the fact that He is my Lord and He is my Savior. Um, about a month ago, I had asked my mom when Church at the Creek was, because I always love this service, and I've been going to Three Creeks for about three years now, and every year my family and I have had the opportunity to come. And I was just interested in when it was because I was going to want to come, and so I asked my mom, and she was like, I'm not sure. We'll have to ask Joel at the next um, church service. And so two weeks down the road, I was just sitting in the sanctuary, and um, Joel and Morgan were up on stage, and they had announced that we would have Church at the Creek in about three weeks. So two weeks go by, and Kendall got baptized about, I'd say, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, right? And um, I had been praying about it since I had asked my mom if we were going to get baptized. Or, sorry, if there's going to be a baptism. And I had just asked the Lord what he was wanting to do in my life. Not even if it was baptism, but just if it was wanting to work in my life in a certain way. And I really wanted to have an idea of who he was and what he was doing in my life. Um, and so when Kendall got baptized, I had been praying about it. And I was like, okay, this is really cool. Like, her story is amazing. And... I was really inspired by it, and I wanted to continue to pray about it, but I started to continue to pray about baptism, like specifically baptism. And again, I didn't know if that was what the Lord was wanting to do in my life, but I just trusted Him, and that was my main thing, is I didn't believe that I was trusting Him before that. I was kind of just going with, oh, that's what the Lord would want to do, but I wasn't actually like speaking to Him about it. And... So I continued to pray about it, and this past Monday, I had the opportunity to go to a Young Life small group, and I wasn't able to make it to church last Sunday, um, so I was going to listen to the podcast online. And I decided that I was going to listen to it on my way to the small group on Monday. And so I started to listen to it, and I was in the car, and I just prayed that the Lord would um, speak to me in a way that I would be able to hear him. And I got into the car and I started to listen to the podcast. And it was Erica speaking at the time. And I hadn't heard um, much about this, but when I turned on the podcast, the first thing that I heard her say, well, not the first thing, but 
At the beginning of the message, she said that she would interchangeably use the word God and Yahweh throughout the message. And of course I was driving, so I wasn't like completely aware of what was listening, what I was listening to, but those were the words that really stuck with me, like that she was going to use the words God and Yahweh in the message. And so I got to my small group and we were going through our lesson and um, we were talking and we were going to read Psalms. Um, but I was flipping to Psalms and right after Psalms is Proverbs. And while I was flipping, I saw that I had highlighted something in my Bible and it was Proverbs 2, 5 through 12. And I was like, I don't normally highlight a ton of things in my Bible because I just, I don't. <laughs> and so um, I was like, oh, that must be really important. And so I was like, for some reason I had the calling to like go back and read it. And so I bookmarked it. And after we had finished our lesson, I took some time at the end to like read what I had highlighted previous times that I had read my Bible before. And um, after I read, I'll read the verse to you guys. That verse says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways know him, and he will make your path straight. Do not wish in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, and turn away from all evil. This will be the healing for your body and strengthening up for your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest, your barns will be completely filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. Do not despise the Lord's instruction and, and son, do not loathe in his discipline for the Lord disciplines the ones he loves just as the father disciplines the ones he loves. So after I read that, I didn't do much thinking about what it meant. I just kind of read it because I knew that it was important. And my friends and I, we all went to Graders that night and we had a good time. We enjoyed talking and everything. And I had about a 30 minute drive back, so I hadn't quite finished the message. So I was like, I'll finish it. And so I turned on the message and I prayed once again that the Lord would speak to me in the way that he wanted to speak to me and um, that I would know who he is, like know who the Lord is in my life and how he is working. And so we, I drove home and I was listening to the message and a little bit went by in the message and Erica had quoted that exact verse right after that. And I was just amazed. I was like, I feel like I've heard that verse before. And then I, she like told us what verse it was. And I was like, I literally just read that. And it was just the coolest thing ever. And I didn't, I was just like continuing the message and I was like, that's you, God. And um, I continued the message and I had about 10 minutes left of my drive. So I decided to turn on some worship music and just listen to the Lord once again. And the song, normally I'll like go through my playlist and pick out the song that I want to listen to. And the song, but I didn't do that this time. I just shuffled my playlist and the song that came on was, oh, I had realized that on, the name of the podcast was Yahweh, and the song that came on was, the name of it was Forever Yahweh, and I, I was just like, whoa, Lord, like, you're here, you're working, and it was a super cool experience, and that song was just all about, like, I am your Lord, and I am your God, and I will be with you forever, and I can't even explain like how I was feeling during that moment, but I just, it's so, it was, it was so surreal. And so I continued on throughout that day and that was in the evening. And then the next day I was going to text Joel and just ask him like, Hey, would you be willing to talk about baptism some more? And I wasn't even planning on like committing to baptizing. I was just like, I want to talk about this some more and get some more information and understand all what it means. And so we continued, and I continued throughout that day, and Joel was like, hey, would you wanna call me later? So I called him later, and it was on, I had just finished my CrossFit workout, and I was listening to some worship music on the way home, and the song that came on was Waters Wild. And in that song, it said, today is the day that you will be baptized. And 
that was just like my final sign from God, like saying like, this is what you need to do. And this is, this is how I'm gonna work through your life. Like you are my child and you will forever be mine. And um, so I talked to Joel and he was explaining that he had went on a run earlier and um, he had prayed to God that like, cause he hadn't necessarily had anyone commit to being baptized this Sunday but he had talked about how he wanted at least one person. He was like, God, if it's your will, like, I want at least one person to be baptized on Sunday. And um, within four hours, I had texted him that night asking if we could talk about baptism. And so it was just super cool that, like, to see how God had worked through that situation. And it really made me feel like, like I was chosen to do this and um, that I, I'll be... I'll be forever his child, so I, I love to know that. And that's, that's my story. <laughs> I just think that the, the sensitivity that Campbell has to the Spirit of God is so cool. And for those of us that have been following Jesus for longer than Campbell, or if you never have before, I just think her sensitivity, you can live your life thinking that it's full of coincidences, or you can live your life trusting in the providence of God that he lines up little things that make a big difference. And I just think it's amazing. So we're so proud of you. Uh, we're going to get to baptize Campbell down in the, uh, I hope we don't get washed away. Water is wild. The water is wild. It's true. And uh, we're going we're gonna to baptize Campbell down there. So in a minute, we're all going to stand up and go down there and watch it and, and celebrate. Let me just make sure we're on the same page. Baptism is something that somebody does to tell everybody that's watching that they're a follower of Jesus, that they trust in the cross, not in their jumping ability. And that's what Campbell wants to do today. So this is a decision that she's made and this is a celebration of it. It's a big day for her, obviously, because she just shared that. But I would also say it's a big day for you because you're the witness. We don't get baptized in our own bathtubs by ourselves. We do it in front of our friends and our family and our church family because it's our job to remind Campbell the next time she breaks one of the commandments, Ann and Dave, we're going to remind her, hey, we saw you declare your love for Jesus. And so I'm, I'm speaking specifically to the crew back here. This is a big day for you. Because when Campbell, I mean, this is not easy. To live a life for Jesus, it's not easy. And so she needs you to remind her of this moment where she's saying to you that he is the Lord of her life and that he is forgiving her sins. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna uh, go down there. Actually, I'm gonna pray. And then we're gonna go down there. Dave, uh, Campbell's dad and I are gonna go get to baptize Campbell in the creek. You guys can kind of make your way that direction. And as soon as she, we, we, uh, as part of the Karis Fellowship, we'll try and immerse her. So we'll baptize her in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. When she comes out the third time, we celebrate more than when we did last night when the Buckeyes won right? So uh, we go nuts because Campbell wants you to know that she will be forever in heaven with the Lord. So let me pray and uh, we'll go down there. Father, we pray for Campbell. We are so thankful for her sensitivity to the voice of the Lord. Let it be an example to those of us that heard that testimony today. We pray for Campbell as she grows up as she tries to walk with you all the days of her life, that she will, that she will, and that she will find joy and peace and hope in a relationship with you. I pray that Campbell would never slip back into thinking that this depends on her, her jumping ability. But Lord, I pray that she will always be reminded that this just depends on you and what you have done for us. And so I pray that she would never think that she is saved through obedience, but rather saved to obedience and that she'll walk in obedience to you for the rest of her life. Thanks for this awesome church family that we get to be a part of. Thanks for this moment in Jesus name. Everybody said, amen. So after we baptize her service is over, you can hang out as long as you want, but uh, let's go do it. Come on.